Hello out there to you. In this problem, we're going to use a graph to find out how many units the monopoly will choose to produce, what price they'll choose to produce, and then think about perfectly price discriminating monopolies outcome and, and choice there. Okay, so we've got a standard uh, graph here. This is demand. This is marginal revenue. It's on the inside there. And that's how they go. And then this is marginal cost and average total cost. So if the firm is not able to or not allowed to price discriminate, consumer surplus would be what? OK, so first of all, we have to figure out what the quantity is. So the quantity is going to be produced to where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. I guess that's not the quantity equaling, but that's, the, that's how we find the quantity. So here's marginal revenue. Follow that to where it hits marginal cost. It hits it right there. So the number of units is going to be 200. They're going to mark up the price up to 25. Okay, and the consumer surplus is the area uh, below the demand curve, but above the price. So it's going to be right here. It'll be this purple triangle right there is the consumer surplus. So that's a difference of 10. It's a difference of 200. So the old consumer surplus would be 10 times 200, which is 2,000. Half of that is 1,000. What are the units? The units are in money. Whatever the money is, we don't know what the money is. Could be rupees, could be dollars, whatever. So 1,000 is the answer to the first one. Now the producer surplus is going to basically be the profit. So it's the area above marginal cost and, mar and average total cost below the price. This problem is not asking for that, but the producer surplus can be found right there. So it would be $10 on uh, 200 units. So that's going to be 2,000. Okay, it's not a triangle, it's that whole rectangle right there. Uh, that's the producer surplus. And this, this up here is the consumer surplus. The deadweight loss, if the firm is able to price or not able to price discriminate, is the difference between the allocative efficiency level or allocatively efficient level, which is 400. That would be the competitive uh, outcome and the monopoly outcome. So it's and then it's that value of that. So it's that that triangle right there. We do a lot of triangles in intro micro classes. So the, here it's 10, 200. So the initial dead weight loss would be one half uh, 10 times 200. Again, it would be 1,000. And if you look at it, the area of that triangle and the area of that triangle are the same. Uh, but you always got to do your work because we don't know if it's going to be uh, uh, the same scale. Okay, if monopoly perfectly price discriminates. Okay, what does that mean? That means that every consumer is going to pay exactly what they're willing to pay. So the monopolist is going to go, all right, you guys are going to pay that price. You guys are going to pay that price. You guys are going to pay that price. Yeah, it's going to pay that price all the way down here. So they're going to they're going to uh, sell units up to the quantity where marginal cost equals demand. But then the, there'll be a whole bunch of different prices. So now the producer surplus is going to be all the way over here. And if you notice, there is no consumer surplus because that green triangle is uh, now producer surplus. So the consumer surplus falls to zero. The dead weight loss is also zero because that quantity is the same as the competitive quantity where marginal cost equals demand. And then the producer surplus here, they're gonna capture the whole thing. So it's it's a big triangle, uh, 15 up to 35, which is 20 times 400. And that's 8,000 is 4,000, okay? And that's consistent if you add the dead weight loss plus the consumer surplus from the original part of the problem plus the producer surplus. Producer surplus takes the whole thing. There you go. That's how to figure it out on a graph.